Hello everyone, this is a cardiovascular system in five minutes. Like, comment, and share. The heart. The heart is a muscular organ located in front of the chest slightly left to the sternum or the breastbone. A rushing heart rate for adults is 60 to 100 beats per minute and in children, 70 to 110 beats per minute. According to the CDC, heart disease is the number one leading death in America and of 90% of these heart diseases are preventable. The cardiovascular system main function is to pump blood throughout the body. The heart is like a muscular pump, if you will. It circulates blood to the tissue and to the rest of the body. This is important because blood is important. Blood contains nutrition, waste, and oxygen, and without it, our cells cannot survive. The heart is involuntarily, which means that it doesn't need help or any type of signals from the brain to function. For example, if you were to tell your leg to lift up, either leg, it will lift up. It's voluntarily. But if you were to tell your heart to stop, it will not stop because it is involuntary. The cardiovascular system main components are the heart, blood, and blood vessels. Speaking of blood, blood carries oxygen, nutrition, and waste. It regulates pH balance, temperature, and water. Blood components such as leukocytes help fight against diseases. In the blood, you will find red blood cells, which is about 44%, white blood cells, which makes up about less than 1%, I'll say, then platelets, which is also 1%, and then we have the plasma, which makes up the majority of blood, coming in at 55%. And in the average human adult body, there's about 1.20 to 1.50 gallons of blood. The oxygenated blood travels to the heart via the superior and inferior vena cava. It fills up the one of four chambers of the heart, the right atrium. From there, it has to pass through a tricuspid valve, and valves are like doors to the chambers to prevent the backflow of blood. From there, we're going to the right ventricle. The right ventricle is the largest chamber of the heart because it does most of the contracting or pushing. So once the blood is filled in the right ventricle, it passes through the pulmonary semilinear valve. Then it goes to the pulmonary arteries. From the pulmonary artery, it goes into the lungs where most of the gas exchange occurs. From there, the blood is now oxygenated and it travels to the pulmonary veins. From the veins, it goes into the left atrium. Left atrium is the bicuspid or the mitral valve. From there, the left ventricle. Then it goes into the aorta. To the aorta, it goes into the tissues and to the rest of the body. So I wanted to point out that arteries are carrying blood away from the heart and veins carry blood towards the heart. Now in the heart illustrations you may see a lot of times that the arteries are painted blue and the veins are painted red and this is because we're in the heart now. You know we're not in any other part of the body. So when you see that the pulmonary artery is painted blue then know that it is just carrying deoxygenated blood away from the heart. And when you see veins just know that it's carrying oxygenated blood toward the heart. The electrical conduction system of the heart generates or transmits action potentials or electricity through the atrium and the ventricles. This action potential or electricity gives the contractions to the chambers, which is responsible for pumping the blood throughout the body. The electrical impulses travels from the SA node to the AV node. This is where the impulses are slowed down for a short period of time and then they'll continue on with the bundle branches of his. The bundle branches of his divides into right and left pathways called the bundle branches. Then the left and right branches send electrical signals to the Purkinje fibers. The Purkinje fibers then in turn contracts the ventricles. The electrical recording of this activity is called electrical cardiogram, aka EKG. While reading a normal EKG, the first wave you encounter will be the P wave. It signifies the beginning of a cardiac cycle. The P wave is initiated by the SA node and represents atrial depolarization. This is when the heart contracts. Next, the QRS complex. This represents ventricular depolarization or ventricular contraction. The T wave represents ventricular repolarization or when the ventricles relax. Three important time periods are the QP interval or sometimes it's called the PR interval, the ST segment and the QT interval. The PR interval represents the total time it requires for the action potential or electricity to travel through the SA node, through the atrial myocardium, the AV node, through the AV bundle, and the right and left bundle branches, and through the Bacanji fibers throughout the entire ventricular myocardium. 
The ST segment starts at the end of the S wave and ends at the beginning of the T wave. During this period of time, it says that the ventricles are completely depolarized or contracted. It occurs during the plateau phase. The QT interval begins at the Q wave and ends at the T wave. During this period of time, it represents the beginning of the ventricular depolarization and the end of ventricular repolarization. The SA node of the sinoatrial node is called a pacemaker because it initiates the maximum amount of electrical impulses. This is not to be confused with the actual pacemaker of the heart. Pacemaker of the heart is a device that is inserted to help patients with irregular heartbeats or bradycardia. Though they have similar functions, they are not the same. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please be sure to like, comment, and share for more related content.